Welcome to Primes and Divisibility. Starting from this series, we're going to start moving on from algebra and more to number sense. So this is the first topic under number sense, primes and divisibility. So these two first questions are kind of like warm-up questions to get us in the groove of thinking about divisibility and prime factorizations. So let's look at the first question. What is the prime factorization of 420? Now this is a very basic question. We start with 420 and there's many ways to do this. I prefer using the tree method. So we know it must it's an even number so it must be divisible by 2 and we keep doing this until we have all of the branches end at prime factors. So the prime factorization of 420 would be 2 raised to the third power times 3 times 7. When writing out prime factorizations, it's usually customary to write it in, from, in order from least to greatest. Now, what is the prime factorization of 1001? Now, this one is not really efficient when it comes to using the traditional method of what we just did, which is the tree method. This, you just kind of have to memorize. This is pretty special. It's 11 times 13 times 17. This combination is used all the time in competitive math competitions. And these are all three very different and rather larger prime numbers. So that's why it's better to remember than to solve for every single time. Now let's move into the actual problem of this video. The number 64 has the property that it is divisible by its unit's digit, which is four. How many whole numbers between 10 and 50 have this property? So we know it's between 10 and 50, and there are 10 different digits that it could end in. But we can't really say that a number is divisible by zero. So really, we're going to have nine columns here. We're going to have one all the way to nine. So now that we have all nine of these columns, let's analyze each column. So under this column, we're going to be writing out all of the numbers between 10 and 50 that end with the digit 1. But any number is divisible by 1. So here we're going to have 11, 21, 31, and 41. All of these would be valid answers. Now under 2. If your number is ending in 2, then it must be an even number. Therefore, it must be divisible by 2. So all of these numbers, 12, 22, 32, and 42, would be divisible by 2. It is in the same case with 3. Because 3, it's not by looking at the end digit that you could just find out if it's divisible by 3. So out of 13, 23, 33, and 43, only 33 is divisible by its unit's digit. For 4, we have 24 and 44. But then, the same thing from 1 and 2 applies to 5. Because since it already ends with a 5, it must be divisible by 5. So therefore, 15, 25, 35, and 45 are all valid. Now for 6. There's 16, 26, 36, and 46. Out of them, 36 is the only one. None of the numbers that end in 7 is divisible by 7. And out of 18, 28, 38, and 48, only 48 is divisible by 8. And none of the numbers that end in 9 is divisible by 9 either. So by counting how many total numbers we have written out, it's 4, 8, 12, 6. 16, and then we add one more, which is 7, 17. So the answer to this last problem would be 17 numbers. 17 numbers between 10 and 50 are divisible by their unit's digit.